Yetiri wanted to say something to her father, but she got obstructed in the middle of the way. Maybe she wanted to say one of the following things. If you are one of us, help us. The Sahik sought for the help of Jake Sully because she tested the blood of Jake in the past and she realized that Jake had a pure vibration from his energy. There is a reason why she is called the Sahik, the interpreter of Ewa. When Supe was getting on his Ikran, he didn't make a bond with it, and yet the Ikran understood his command very well. Does it mean that you can fly your Ikran very well even without the bond? Nope. You can fly your Ikran for a while even without the bond, at least once a halo and flying is needed. But if your flying includes complex routes, you will find it very difficult to fly in the sky without the bond. Sooner or later though, you always have to wake up. Sooner or later though, you always have to wake up. Jake Sully said that thing twice in the movie, when he lost his spinal back on earth, when he failed to protect the Amatikayan people. These are the two times when Jake Sully actually felt like a failure in life. Also the clause can be comprehended in the following way. Those white ashes are no way snowfall. Ashes can be white or pale in color, especially when they are the result of the complete combustion of natural materials such as wood, paper or certain types of vegetation. The wheelchair of Jake Sully was never changed. It was always the same on earth and on Pandora. Jake spread his hand with the biological linker to the exact same position where the cue of the dragon was. You can confirm this by the look of his shadow. He had a good plan from the very beginning. No wonder why Jake didn't have to die while making the Sahelu with the last shadow. Exactly how was the consciousness of Dr. Grace sent to her avatar body? And why did the Navi people connect their biological linkers with the roots of Ewa? There are three possible reasons behind that. This gathering of the Navi people during the transfer was a part of their spiritual practice. If you look closely, you will notice the frequent surge of the luminance coming from the roots of Ewa, meaning the concentrated energy of the Navi people through their cues was powering up the transfer process. These people almost worked like a biological power plant to continue the process. You can see the same thing again in the end of the movie when Jake was transferring his consciousness 100% into his avatar body. And there is a higher possibility that these people were amplifying their messages to Ewa in a collective manner using their cues to convince her to finish that process. And this theory makes more sense because Ewa is so big and so powerful that she should not need any kind of energy surge from the Navi people to finish the consciousness transmit process. You can also see that the luminance was gone when Grace died because Ewa aborted the transmit process as well as start receiving messages from all the Navi people immediately. This is a fantastic biological mechanism. I wish there was something like that here on Earth. I would get to talk to my mother again. By the way, exactly what was Eva doing during the translocation process? Being powered or convinced by the Navi people, Eva was transferring all the synaptic connections inside the brain of Dr. Grace Augustine to the brain of her avatar. So, it was a consciousness transfer process. According to the Navi people, Ewa is a living being, a living entity, the biggest conscious being on Pandora. And she can talk to someone, make decisions, and even form a deep connection with any creature within Pandora. So, there is no surprise with the fact that she also interacted with Dr. Grace and said something to her. Why did Dr. Grace fail to come back after passing through the eyes of Ewa? It's mainly because she was physically not that strong enough to keep her interaction steady with Ewa. According to the signs depicted in Avatar, interaction with Ewa will consume a heavy level of energy of that person. But, Dr. Grace was consistently losing her consciousness, causing a lack in energy consumption. So, she failed to come back. This is the same thing that also happened to Tony Stark when he was snapping. He could not survive the energy surge. She said in the past, she can even die for seeing Ewa, and she actually had to die in the end of the movie for seeing Ewa. That's a big damn irony. I would die to get samples. The sky people have sent us a message. Sute has more command over English than Jake has over the Navi language. Otherwise, Jake Sully would never choose him to be the translator. Ever wondered what's the reason behind that? Jake was familiar with the Navi people for like 4 months. But those Navi people were familiar with these nasty humans for like many years. So, it's gonna make more sense why these Navi people have more command over English compared to Jake Sully having command over their Navi language. Doesn't feel like 6 years. More like a fifth of tequila and an ass kicking. It took six years for the avatar Tommy to become an adult, and Nithiri was also an adult when she came to meet Jake Sully in the woods. Considering this fact, can I call this relationship a child marriage? Also, there can be another possibility that the avatar bodies grow faster inside the tube, meaning Nithiri was not six when she saw Jake Sully for the first time. When Jake Sully was flying away on the dragon, you can see Nithiri is sitting in a backward position right behind him. And that too is a fact. This scum sucking bitch was smiling after hearing the plans on destroying the Ewa tree, and she was also the one in the past disconnecting Jake Sully from his avatar body when Parker was not even asking that bitch individually to break the link of Jake. You can't, no, you can't do that. 
When Su Te was hitting on the glass of the helicopter, the glass had no spot in one frame, but it was broken in the next frame, even before being hit by the arrow. Was that a small filming mistake? Definitely. How did he ever talk and convince all the animals to fight against humans? Even the Ikrans came out from the mountains to join the war. There is no way Ewa managed to convince them all through the voice trees because the voice trees are not available in the mountains, meaning the Ikrans would never get to know about the message. Now here's the fact. Remember the flux vortex coming out of the spiritual Ewa tree? See the flux vortex in these false color images? Yeah, that's what messes up my instrument. Yeah, the flux vortex is actually a kind of spiritual energy frequency and this energy comes up with a spiritual message embedded in it. And the psychic had been shown to interpret the will of Ewa, which means the spiritual message of Ewa coming from the spiritual energy frequency. In short, Ewa convinced all the animals out there through her spiritual message, which is the flux vortex, to fight for their motherland. This is a kind of Wi-Fi connection you can say, but biological or spiritual Wi-Fi connection. That is f***ing amazing. The theory made a small sound when the dog seemed to be submissive. She also did the same thing when she also saw the dragon to be submissive to Jake Sully. And she had been hounded and assaulted by these both kinds of animals in the past. Was that a small expression of her to both these animals after getting surprised at them? Definitely. When Cornell shot the avatar of Jake Sully, he was not shot directly. He got the shot of a bounced bullet. Seems like Natiri's training in the past eventually saved the life of Jake Sully. <laughs> How did the Navi people survive falling from so high? That's because they have fucking bones made of carbon fiber. Here we go. And they have bones reinforced with naturally occurring carbon fiber. They are very hard to kill. How the hell or not did this guy knew exactly where to find the link unit of Jake Sully? Because the flux vortex coming from Ewa would never let them track the location of the helicopter of Trudy as well as the link unit. Here we go. Well, at least they can't track us up here. Not this far into the vortex. And this scene works as a proof that it was just a bloody coincidence. If you remember the scene, you will also realize that the first link unit was glitchy. Unit 1, Beulah. She's the least glitchy. Can you just imagine what the hell could happen if the first link unit was fully functional? Did you feel like crying on that scene? This is also the first time when the actual Jake Sully got to see the theory with his own eyes. People the first question of Sute was whether the people on Pandora were safe or not. He could ask for the help of Jake at first, but nope. It really shows how much patriotism he actually had for Pandora. Maybe he was an arrogant guy in the beginning, but a true patriot from the inside. Why did Sute want to die in the hand of Jake? I wanna ask you two questions to answer your question. What is a better choice for you to do? Stay paralyzed on the bed like a wounded warrior and suffer from pain until you get old enough and die? And stay remembered as a martyr among the Navi people forever? I don't know about you, but I will definitely choose the first option any day. Who the hell wants to suffer so long before death? How did the blonde girl over there get sick? What's the reason behind that? If you walk a couple scenes back, you can recall this woman crying after seeing the genocide of the Navi people. Maybe she had to suffer from emotional trauma and she cried too much. Because a saline solution was also injected into her body meaning she was dehydrated. And you're supposed to be dehydrated when you cry too much, right? The Sahik also put on the same dress which was also worn by her in the past while trying to transfer the synaptic connections of Dr. Grace Augustine into her avatar body which confirms that it was a ritual outfit only used for extremely spiritual activities. This animal was flying very easily despite the fact that the rotation of their wing was very slow. It's all being possible because of the low gravity on Pandora. This is why the mountains also float in Pandora. Grace explained it to me. The source of the waterfalls in the floating mountains on Pandora is actually rain. The mountains are all covered up with a lot of vegetation which helps to trap moisture in the air. When the moisture rises up, it cools down and turns into rain, which falls on the mountains and flows down as waterfalls. The dragon, as you can see by the look of its skeleton, was rode by the grandfather's grandfather of Netiri. My grandfather's grandfather was Taruk Makto. Which means this dragon was not the last shadow. The last shadow was actually the one that hounded Sully and Natiri to the forest. This dragon was the last one of its kind. It took almost six years for Jake Sully to reach Pandora from Earth. He was also the sixth rider of the last shadow. Is that a coincidence? You wrote this? It has only happened five times since the time of the first songs. <laughs> Every Navi member was touching each other as a part of the ritual to show they will always remain together irrespective of what happens. Likewise, we humans also hold the hands of our friends and family or just embrace them to ensure we will always love them and stand beside them even in the darkest patches of their lives. That is impressive. Sir, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Hold on. You can't interrupt a Lincoln's progress. 
Norm Spellman was trying to stop Miles Kors from breaking the link of Jake Sully because breaking the consciousness with an avatar all of a sudden when the avatar body is highly conscious can create even a brain stroke or a heart attack. The same thing also happens to old people when they wake up from sleep all of a sudden because of a tremendous sound or other kinds of inconvenience, right?